Hey everyone, thank you for stopping by Living To Do's review of Married At First Sight, Season 17, Episode 19, called Sex, Lies, and Questionable Behavior. Before I get started with the review, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it, and I thank you in advance. So let's go ahead and get to this episode. And let's start off with Becca and Austin. Becca and Austin are, they're just, Becca, it's Becca. I find her boring. Um, they're the boring, their, their relationship it seems like a boring soap opera. And, um, and it continues. And there's, with Austin, there's no lights, no camera, no love. And it's kind of kind of weird. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really into watching them. And actually, all season, I really liked Austin. Becca, I'm sure she's a nice girl, but I didn't really care to follow this story about her. It just wasn't really that interesting. Uh, he is not. Uh, I don't know if he doesn't find his wife sexually attractive. Are people not having real loving? sexual relationships as years passed it doesn't seem like it men seem to be having issues it just seems a lot of these um, relationship shows men are having a hard time getting up to speed and started with you know a sexual intimate relationship with the woman especially a loving one like love making actually it just seems like that's a thing of the past um, they're not getting along too well. Becca is feeling something, sensing something. Uh, she doesn't think that Austin puts her first. An example of that, they went, I think they went to do s making some clay stuff. I don't know what it was, but pottery. And she was cold. She went to get his jacket and he asked that she wash her hands first. And she was hurt. Because she thinks that, you know, that the jacket was no big deal. She'd do anything for him. But, you know, him asking her to wash her hands before putting on his jacket was hurtful to her. Later, they have um, footage of them in their living room. It's not really when the cameras were really filming. It's like um, the hidden camera footage. And there's audio. And Austin is trying to discuss with her. Uh, he doesn't like the optics. He doesn't like what the ca the camera is capturing about him. And he doesn't like how she talks to him. And he's trying to convey this to her. And she believes that, that she's, she doesn't feel that she's being disrespectful to him. And he doesn't think she's sensitive to how it's making him feel. And he doesn't like the way it's looking on camera. So I think he's keeping his real feelings about her to himself, which it's really interesting to see how he really feels. They both speak with friends and Austin tells his friends that the words that Becca used to describe them, it's hurtful. And it doesn't seem to come off well when he tries to convey that to her. And his friend basically says, don't, you know, light yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. You got to do what's best for you. I, he doesn't, you know, he's not a bad guy. And we see Austin as always being attentive, loving, affectionate with her. But I guess off camera, she doesn't see any of this, it seems like. It's an only an on-camera love and... She doesn't think she wants a relationship that's fake and phony. So there's a problem. After the discussion with friends, Austin leaves the apartment. Hmm. Though I think it's already like a day before decision day anyway. So you would be leaving anyway. But there's that. Okay, let's move on to the next couple, which is Michael and Chloe. Dr. Pia visits them and... Chloe is telling her that they're still presenting their best selves to one another. 
uh, which is, you know, the representatives are still in the building. She, of course, Dr. Pia, the sex ex expert, is going to ask if there has been sex and there has not been intercourse, though they've been exploring one another, which is interesting. They show black and white footage of the couple believing that they're in the privacy of their own home. I'm sure they were told that those cameras were hidden and plus they were under a no I don't think they were under a blanket the whole time because they put a little dot or something to 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 distort the image and they were really really touchy feeling she's looks like they're watching tv I think it's at night it's black and white footage and she's looks like she's putting her hands down his pants and she's not really looking at him and he's not really looking. They're kind of still looking at the TV, I guess. And so that's going on. And then there's other image where she's laying down on her stomach and he's doing something to her. He's sitting down though, but so they're touchy feely and we get to see that. I don't know if we've ever really seen that with other couples like that. That was interesting. They're having an adult relationship. And, um, Chloe tells Dr. Pia, you know, they sleep in, she sleeps in the nude. She's very free. Later they go to a sex store. That's their assignment to go to a, a sex shop and get three items. And they come home and play with their new toys. And they look like they're having a good time. So everything seems okay in that neck of the woods. So I'm happy for them. Really, really like to see it. Um... So Emily and Claire get together and Claire, first of all, you want to see how fast Emily's eye is healing. I mean, she looked like she almost lost that eye. Now she looks like she never had an accident. It healed crazy fast. She looks good. And then even uh, Claire says something about that. And Emily tells Claire that she wants Brennan in her life. How sweet. Then we see Emily and Brennan go to dinner strange turn of events hurt feelings are erupted Emily goes to the bathroom and cries she can just see that they're just what happens really kind of what I saw was Emily was kind of bringing up old stuff rehashing stuff and Brennan wanted to you know stay on a positive past or a path and he thinks that Emily, Emily is negative. I couldn't believe that she thought she was negative. She has negative responses to things. And this is why he's not sexually attracted to her. I'm not buying that. First of all, I don't really see her as being negative. Uh, I guess he kind of is. But he said that he didn't like the way she, she had her comments about Michael and Chloe's wedding vows. That you know, she said they were too vanilla, and that hurt you that much. The turn that this woman turned you off, and I guess there were some other things that she said. And huh, I just don't think that's enough. Or she definitely deserves a conversation to know how you really feel about this. So maybe perhaps she can change her behavior. So. You know, she can work on that. That's something that could be easily worked on. But, I don't know. That's just too crazy. Oh, anyway, Emily had a second visit with Claire. In this visit, this is where Claire told Emily that Brennan has been going on. He wants to, He wanted to plan a double date with Cameron. So, of course, Emily is hurt. And Claire says, you know, he, he doesn't disrespect, he disrespects her. And that's what she notices. Emily, you know, agreed that he does speak to her dis disrespectfully. Poor Emily, that this guy is really out there doing this. Later, Brennan FaceTimes Emily and she confronted him, confronted him about the double dating. And he says it's a lie. Boy, that's really bold. And I, this has happened before people got caught on dating apps. And, you know, when they 
the demise of their relationship. They just couldn't wait a couple more days until it was all over. But that is really, really hurtful. I really hope that isn't true. And if it is, my God, just a terrible person. Um, you know, the girls get together and they build a circle of trust, which is Chloe, uh, Emily, Claire, and Becca. Lauren was not there. Uh, basically, Emily tells the girls what transpired with Brennan and Chloe looks shocked. She doesn't even know what she stepped into with this, with this experiment. All the girls seem to be, uh, had rocky marriages that didn't last. And she, she's new to it because she came in late. And I'm hoping she thinks that this is not going to be her fate as well. They, Emily said how Brennan said she was too negative. They couldn't believe it. Everyone looked in shock saying she's too positive. And that is so true because I have said time and time again how positive Emily was. Even when the accident happened, always, she's always smiling. It's like a little kid smile looking up at somebody with, with Kool-Aid on her lip. She just has that little kid smile. I, she's so cute. And so what the hell is he talking about? She's negative. His demeanor is negative. I mean, not to mention he looks like a serial killer with those little beady eyes, but he, I get that negative energy when I just look at him. I don't get that from her at all. So, uh, next week they're going to have decision day and for decision day, it will be decision day for everybody except Michael and Chloe. They get to keep exploring each other and allowing their relationship to grow. So I, I hope. I hope that this, that at least Michael and Chloe down the line, whenever their decision day comes around, that they do say yes. Uh, they look, I'm, I'm really warming up to them. They look better together, especially when he's act, in his active wear. He does seem more appealing and I know she likes that. So uh, I think they have something that could work. But that is it for now. This episode, ugh. I don't know what to say. It was, well, we have hardly any couple, so I'm glad it's an hour and a half long. There really isn't really much to say, so we'll have decision day and maybe we can finally be over with this. So please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and I thank you in advance. And do please check out my channel. I have other videos, other TV shows, movie reviews there, room tours, um, food reviews. So there's a lot there. So please take check it out. But for now, I gotta go. I got living to do. Bye.